that you were a member of the 464th bomb group. Correct. Okay. And you were at your base in Italy. The base name... Oh, the, the, we were near Barry. Barry. B-A-R-I. B-A-R-I. Okay. And there were two groups there, yours being one of them. Once you started flying combat missions, what were you thinking on that first combat mission? Scared to death. Was it a daytime mission or a nighttime yes, mission? Yes, we did not fly night missions. No night Americans missions. Americans flew only day missions. The okay. British flew the night missions. Ah. Thank goodness. Ploasti was the number one strategic fuel target in Europe at the time. Were you involved in some of those raids on We went there Steve? 10 times. Those were low altitude missions, correct? There was only one. How did that go? They had a mission where they went in at 50 feet, which was a disaster. It was a pretty good foul up on the lead navigator. Hmm. And he was court martialed after that. Because the oil refineries were heavily defended. Oh, terrible. Where was the mission to, the one that you got shot down? We were going to Pardubice, Czechoslovakia. Okay. Happened to be on the 24th of August. And of course, we did not find out right away. That was the day that Romania capitulated and the Germans lost the Ploesti oil fields. And they were building a synthetic oil refinery at a place called Pardubice in Czechoslovakia. Okay. And uh, our mission was to knock it out before it ever opened. And uh, we had a change in the wind. And on the way up, we had to fly between four German air, places, air fighter bases. So they had a chance to land and refuel and come after us twice. And they had a change in the wind. And we were five minutes without our little, maybe seven minutes without fighter cover. And the guys that happened to be coming to fighter cover were the Tuskegee Airmen. Hmm. And they had flown with us before and they were great. They were great. I have all the respect in the world for them. Hmm. And they got a rotten deal hmm. to be treated like they were treated. But anyway, uh, we were flying lead ship on the last squadron in the Air Force. You know, you alternated flying positions. It was our turn to fly there. And we caught a 20 millimeter <coughs> cannon shell in our fuel transfer system. And of course, immediately the plane burst into flame and the pirate ran the alarm bell and the radio was out. And I stuck my head up in the Astrodome, which we used for this plastic for using the shooting with the camera. And he was going like this, jump. So I opened the door to the nose, nose turret and told the guy to jump and I'd follow him. And he said, I'm afraid. I said, you haven't got much time to be afraid. This plane's on fire and going to blow up. He said, well, how are you going to get out? I said, well, they told us if we jumped on the nose wheel door with 50 pounds or 100 pounds of pressure, it would open up. He said, well, I don't want to try it. And I said, well, I do, and I'm going. You sure this is the last chance you get? He said, no. So I jumped and the door opened, and I, I guess I was the first one of the crew out of the airplane, because I landed 60 or 70 miles before they did. Hmm. So. How, how, what was running through your head as you jumped on that door and it opened? Oh, the guy, the parachute opens. It did? Luckily. You pull a ripcord, right? Yes, I did. And I thought, oh, hell, it's not going to... And I threw it away, and all of a sudden, the worst jerk I ever had in my life from that parachute opening. And I was frightened because I was being... trailed by... FW-190 was flying. Uh, I thought he was going to open up on me, but he was just indicating me to the people on the ground. Uh -huh. So you touched down, not in the trees, in an open field? No, I landed in an open field. Okay. And I was being greeted by the Hitler Youth. Uh -huh. You talk about scared. I was scared. 
There were a bunch of 14 to 70 year old kids with rifles and they knew nothing except that the Nazis taught them and they wanted to execute me. Hmm. And uh, it was pretty scary because I was captured right away and uh, and I was taken to a town, I can't remember the name of it, and uh, where a plane crashed and uh, they took me from there to a town called Neuhaus. And a U H A U S, I believe, is the way it's spelled, but I'm not sure. And put me in jail, in a cell. And it was dark. And I was scared, and hungry. I hadn't eaten since 4:30 in the morning. It's about two o'clock in the morning. And uh, I sort of woke up and heard a voice in English say, "Are you hungry?" I said, "Yes, yes, I am. I haven't eaten since 4:30 this morning." And he said, well, we could come to get you shortly and give you some food. So I sat there and finally the guy came and got me and they took me to a major's office. And uh, I had a wound in my left ankle. I caught my boot on the clasp of the nose wheel door and ripped my leg up pretty good. And I had a lot of shrapnel in my leg hmm. from the anti-aircraft fire. And uh, they took me to the major's office and they brought in four other Americans. And I didn't know any of them. And we were warned that if you're captured and you see anybody that you don't know, don't talk to them. Even if they're Americans, don't talk to them. But, excuse me, because the Germans plant guys faking as American to get information from you. Mm -hmm. So you didn't talk to him, and they he took us in our in his car to the hospital in the town of Budweiss, which is exactly where Budweiser beer originally came from. Hmm. And we were put in a cell there, and I was put in with a sergeant who was scared to death. And we got there on a I guess it was Friday or Saturday. We stayed there for two days, and then they came and picked us up and put us on a troop train, or they attached a car to a freight train and didn't put any insignia on it to protect us. And some of our own fighters shot at us, luckily they didn't get anybody. And uh, they took us to uh, a place called uh, Frankfurt on Mine, mm -hmm. which was a big, and there was an interrogation center there, all American, captured American Air Force had to go through Frankfurt, well, I mean, what they call Dulag Luft. You were interrogated at Frankfurt? Yes, when you, you got uh, what they call the Dulag Luft. But what they did is they put you in a solitary confinement in a cell at six by six by six. No windows, no nothing, but just straw on the floor full of bite, lice and bed bugs. And they kept me there for six days before they ever took me in for interrogation. And finally they took me and they took me to a Feldwebel, which is a sergeant, and uh, who spoke perfect English and offered me a Lucky Strike cigarette. And he started asking me questions, and of course at another Geneva Convention, what I have to do is give me your name, rank, and serial number, which I did. And finally he got mad and he said to me, Weinberg, he says, that's a good Deutsch name. He said, why do you fight the Fatherland? And I started to laugh, and he started getting mad. And the more I laughed, the madder he got, till he had me locked up for another night. <laughs> I didn't know until the next day I could have been out of there, because I went to the compound where they were holding some guns, and I ran into the first members of my crew I'd seen since we got shot down. Our pilot was there, and our bombardier was there, and a couple of our uh, Gunners were there. What was going through your head when you were in this six by six by six cell? Well, I thought I was going to go nuts, really, because it was dark, mm -hmm. and you got zilts to eat and drink. You got coffee made out of acorns, and they made their bread with half sawdust and 
pieces of wood in it. And that's about all you got to eat. Once in a while you get a little barley soup. What did you keep in your mind to try to keep yourself? I decided that I would have a session. I would sing. I would do some exercises. I would tell myself jokes. I'd do all kinds of things just, just to keep occupied and not feel like I was going nuts. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have rooms, so we just had the bugs around in a space in the middle where we ate and played cards or did whatever we wanted to do. And you had triple deckers and you had a mattress, they called them a palliast, and it was nothing but burlap full of straw that had bed bugs and lice. Hmm. So you were fighting them all the time. What did you do during the day? When we were in the prison camp? Mm -hmm. Oh, we played cards. Uh, mainly we walked around the, co the compound. Uh, and we had baseball. We had a, uh, the YMCA never got credit for what they did for the POWs during the war. The Red Cross got all the credit. And God knows they were good in their food and clothing and everything else. But the YMCA gave us all our athletic equipment, books, scripts for plays, costumes that they'd rent in Berlin. Oh, they were wonderful. Hmm. We had a, a band in the center compound that was better than Glenn Miller. They were all professional musicians. The day we were liberated, 29th of uh, April of 45, uh, which was not too long ago, big day in my life, uh, the Americans came in and liberated us. And finally at 12.37, because I remember looking to see what time it was. Uh, well, I didn't ever watch that. I just knew it was, and I can't remember how I knew it then. We saw the American flag go up over Mercersburg. And if you ever saw 80,000 men get up and cheer, you can't believe the noise. It was unbelievable. I'll bet. What was going through your mind? Huh? What did you think when you saw that flag? I'm going to get out of here. That's Took right. a long time. But... <laughs> so the captain turned on the lights and gave us a feast and ran the shed ship wide open to New York and had her waiting for us in the harbor with a fireboat shooting stuff and people cheering and we were one of the first groups back. Great. And uh, it was really something. How did it feel being back home? Wonderful. Really? You settled right in? I was never so happy in my life. How do you feel, what do you think military service how did it affect you? Was it good for you, the discipline? Was it bad? Well, I, I think you learn discipline. How about all the difficult experiences, like being shot down in the prison? It's part of life. Would you recommend that young people join the military? I think it should be uh, positively an, a law that you go into the service when you're 18 mm -hmm. and serve at least two years or three years and get the training that you should get to be a good citizen. Mm -hmm.